السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته To carry on with the general embryology lectures I'm gonna discuss in this presentation the events that take place at the third week of development I'm Dr. Dalia Saleh, professor and head of anatomy department at Mansour University, Egypt The objectives of my presentation or the events that take place at the third week of development uh, we also call it the week of threes. There are three major events gastrulation, notochord formation, and neurulation. Also, uh, in the third week, there is a formation of the three germ layers of the embryonic disc the ectoderm, the endoderm, and the mesoderm. The mesoderm differentiates into three parts the paraaxial mesoderm the intermediate mesoderm and the lateral plate mesoderm. We should know the formation and the derivatives of each layer. Here in this picture we can see the gestational sac at the end of the second week, the bilaminar germ layer, apiplast and hypoplast, the two cavities that were formed, the amniotic cavity and the yolk sac cavity. We can see here the extra embryonic coelom and the differentiation of the extra embryonic mesoderm into two layers the uh, somatopleuric layer and splanchnopleuric layers and here we can see the connecting stalk attached at uh, uh, the caudal end of the embryo and here is the cytotrophoplast if we look at the epiplastic layer we can see At the caudal end of the embryo, there is a line called the primitive streak that ends at a node. It's called the primitive node. And at the very cranial end of the embryo, there is a plate called the procordal plate. Imagine that this is the embryonic disc. We cut the amniotic cavity and we are looking to the embryonic disc from above. At first, it looks oval in shape and then with further development, it widens at uh, its cranial end and becomes narrow at its caudal end uh, to form a pear-shaped uh, structure. Also, we can notice the formation of the following areas. The procordal plate at the cranial end of the embryo. The primitive streak at the caudal half of the embryo. And a primitive node just cranial to the primitive streak. First, what is procordal plate? It is the cranial end of the embryonic disc. If we take a section in it, we're gonna notice uh, the two layers that form uh, this uh, plate, the epiplastic layer and the hypoplastic layer. They are closely adherent to each other and they will form a membrane called the buccopharyngeal membrane that will rupture later on at the site of the future mass. Uh, for the primitive streak, it's an area of proliferation of epiplast in the midline of the caudal half of the embryonic disc. The epiplast and the hypoplast fuse behind the primitive streak to form the cloacal membrane. Later on, this membrane will rupture and um, this is at the site of the future anal canal. The primitive streak is the main source for formation of the intraembryonic mesoderm. Again, this is the procordial plate. This is the primitive streak. This is the cloacal membrane. So the primitive node it is an area of proliferation of the epiplast at the cranial end of the primitive streak. A depression appears in its center, it is called a primitive pit. It forms the notochord which grows cranially between the epiplast and the hypoplast layer and stops at the procordial plate. It shares uh, together with the primitive streak in the formation of the interembryonic mesoderm. So what's meant by gastrulation? In gastrulation, the epiplast forms the three germ layers and the hypoplast layer 
disappears. So the bilaminar plate becomes trilaminar. And the three germ layers are finally formed. They are the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. So look at this picture. Imagine that uh, this water that falls from this cleft is the epiplastic layer. And the cleft is the primitive streak. So the epiplastic uh, cells proliferate and just go to the area of the primitive streak and fall down and insinuate themselves between the upper and lower layers and form the additional third layer which is called the intraembryonic mesoderm. Let's see how this happens. This is the cut uh, edges of the amniotic uh, cavity. This is the embryonic disc seen from above. This is the uh, notochord, primitive node, primitive streak. If we take a section in this area and look at it, the cells at uh, the primitive streak from the epiplasts will proliferate and increase in number and just fall down between the uh, upper and lower layers and form the intraembryonic mesoderm. Some of these cells will uh, travel downwards and replace the hypoplastic cell layer as well. So, gastrulation, like I said, means the formation of the three germinates. The first layer is the endoderm, so cells from the epiplast migrate through the primitive streak to replace the hypoplast and uh, form the endoderm. So again, look at this one. This is the primitive node and this is the primitive streak. And at the edges, the epiplastic cells just proliferate like this and fall down and replace the hypoplastic uh, cell layer, like this. So the newly formed layer is called the endoderm. For the ectoderm, uh, the same mechanism, the epiplastic uh, cells again uh, just proliferate and uh, will replace the rest of the epiplastic cells and form the ectoderm, like this. The mesoderm or the intraembryonic mesoderm will be formed as follows. The epiplastic cells migrate between the ectoderm and the endoderm and form the intraembryonic mesoderm like this. So all uh, the three germ layers uh, that are newly formed come from the epiplast at the area of the primitive streak and the primitive node. If you look at this animation, this is the amniotic cavity and this is the yolk sac cavity. This is the epiplast and this is the hypoplast. And this is the extra embryonic uh, mesoderm. Here we can see at the cranial end the procordial plate. This is the primitive node and this is the primitive streak. The epiplastic cells at primitive streak and node will proliferate and migrate towards the edges of the primitive streak and just uh, fall down like this either replace the hypoplastic cells to form the definitive or the newly formed uh, endoderm some of them will replace the uh, epiplastic uh, cells and form the ectoderm and the other cells will migrate between the ectoderm and the endoderm and form the intraembryonic Mesoderm. Thus, by the end of gastrulation process, the three germ layers are formed ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. Remember, all these three germ layers are all derived from the epiplast layer at the area of the primitive node and the primitive streak. For mesoderm differentiation, As you can see in this picture, the mesoderm or intraembryonic mesoderm lies between the ectoderm and the endoderm. It uh, continues at the sides of the embryo with the extraembryonic mesoderm and differentiates into three distinct regions. The cells uh, of the intraembryonic mesoderm close 
to the axis of the body. This axis is called the notochord. They form what is called the paraaxial mesoderm. Para means parallel to, and the axis means the center of the body. The paraaxial mesoderm then will undergo a segmentation and forms a series of somites or series of tissue blocks like this. So in the middle you can see the axis of the body and uh, on each uh, side there is blocks of uh, segments or tissue it is called somite like these. These are part of the paraaxial mesoderm. The paraaxial mesoderm uh, will further differentiate into the following areas. This is a cavity that appears inside the uh, somite. It is called the myocele. Here, each somite will then be divided into ventromedial part forms the sclerotome. These cells will later on uh, will form the vertebrae and the bones of the axis of the body. And the dorsolateral part will form the dermomyotome. The dermatome is the superficial part and will form the dermis of the skin. While the deeper part is the myotome that will form the muscles. For the intermediate mesoderm or intermediate cell mass, it gives rise to the cortex of the suprarenal gland, the two kidneys, the gonads, and the male and female duct system. So in brief, they form the genitourinary system. For the lateral plate mesoderm, it lies on the periphery. Um, cavities appear in the lateral plate mesoderm and these cavities will coalesce together and form the intraembryonic coelom. This intraembryonic coelom will give us uh, the cavities inside our body like the peritoneal cavity, the pelvic cavity, the, uh, the pleural cavities and so on. Uh, the cavity will split the lateral plate mesoderm into two parts. Somatic layer near uh, the periphery of the body, it covers the amnion and a splanchnic layer near the endoderm uh, or uh, near the yolk sac. So what are the derivatives of the three germ layers? We start with the ectoderm, it will form the structures that will be in contact with the external environment, like the epidermis of the skin, like the epithelial lining of the mouth and anus like the cornea of the lens of the eye, like the CNS or the nervous system, like the sensory receptors in the epidermis. For the mesoderm, it will form the intermediate part of our body. So it will form the skeletal system, the muscular system, the genitourinary system, the cardiovascular system. For uh, the endodermal derivatives, it is the inner lining of our body, so it will form the epithelial lining of the digestive tract, uh, the epithelial lining of the respiratory system, the lining of the urethra, urinary bladder, and reproductive system. It will also give us the viscera like the liver, the pancreas, the thymus, the thyroid, and the parathyroid glands. Finally, we'll talk about something called neurulation or formation of the neural tube. Uh, this is the notochord or the axis of the embryonic disc. It lies immediately in the center of the embryo. The overlying uh, ectoderm just above the notochord will be uh, stimulated by signals produced by the notochord and transformed from ectodermal cells into a neural uh, tissue forming cells. It will also stimulate the edges of the neural plate to fold. Thus, above the notochord, we have something called the neural plate containing the neural tissue. And the edges here are called the neural folds. And this is the remaining part of the ectoderm. With further growth, the neural plate deepens and forms the neural groove, and the neural folds approximate to each other. With more and more uh, growth, the two neural folds will approximate and diffuse and uh, some cells will uh, be separated from them and uh, they are called the neural crest cells or neural fold cells. Later on 
the neural plates which was transformed into neural groove will close up and form what's called the neural tube the ectodermal cells will fuse and the neural crest cells will migrate to distant places and give many derivatives so this is the notochord on each of its side the paraaxial mesodermalize overlying it lies the ectoderm so signals from the notochord will stimulate the overlying ectoderm and the transform into neural plates with further development the uh, notochordal tissue will stimulate the neural plate to deepen and form the neural groove and the edges or the neural folds try to approximate each other with more and more growth the neural uh, groove will fuse and form the neural uh, tube and the neural crest cells will migrate along the sides of the neural uh, tube the neural tube closure uh, starts at the uh, cervical region and spreads cranially and caudally so at one point uh, still this neural uh, tube remains open and form the anterior and posterior neuro pores but later on these pores will close up this is a electron microscopic uh, picture of uh, how the neural uh, tube is formed you can see this is the neural groove this is a deep groove here still the two folds did not approximate to each other yet but with further development the uh, neural uh, groove will close up and this is the newly formed neural tube and the neural crest cells will migrate along the sides of the uh, neural tube so what are the derivatives of the neural crest cells we can memorize it by uh, the word games the g reminds you of the ganglia dorsal root ganglia cranial sensory ganglia autonomic ganglia a reminds you uh, for the arachnoid and pia matters the two inner layers that surround the cns m reminds you by the melanocytes or the skin pigment producing cells uh, also cells of the suprarenal medulla e reminds you of the enteric ganglia and s reminds you by the schwann cells or the myelin forming cells but in the peripheral nervous system uh, this is the end of my presentation thanks for listening if you like it please do not forget to subscribe like and share